Welcome into the CHGO Blackhawks post game podcast. Woo, the Hawks win seven to two over the Anaheim Ducks and their horrible effing uniforms. Yeah, I'm Jay Zawoski here with Mario Tirabasi, who's wearing a very nice uniform mm-hmm. today. Mm-hmm. He's rocking the Coors Light hockey jersey. Boy, that was a fun one. Lots to be excited about. The Hawks getting goals today from Ryan Donato, Philip Kurashev. Seth Jones, Connor Bedard, Mackenzie Antwistle, and Tyler Johnson. Kurashev had a pair. Connor Bedard had five points. Oh, Andreas yeah. Athanasiu had two assists in his return. Yeah. And uh, Nick Felino four assists. Yeah. yeah. Nick Felino, by the way, Thursday, 2.30. He'll be here with us. Yeah. Uh, whew, man. So much happening in this game. Yeah. I mean, it, it, absolutely. Not even talking about the massive fights <laughs> that yeah. saw uh, John Gibson get kicked out for crossing center ice to go try and fight Peter Morazic, who was Always a good defending idea. Mackenzie Entwistle from <laughs> Reco. Good, so much going on. There was a ton going on in yes. this one. So let's uh, let's get right to the important stuff right away. Your three stars of the game, Nick Felino, as you mentioned, Mario, four assists. Philip Kurashev is your number two star of the game. Two goals, two assists. He was great again, 18-36, two shots. Well, that's 100 and, 100 and 101 points for his career yeah. today. So congrats to him. And your number their th- number one star, of course, is Connor Bedard. He had a goal, four assists, plus one, 2021 20, of ice time, five shots, and 11 shot attempts. He was all over the place. Everywhere. Again. So here are your nominees for four star of the game. Uh, we are going to give one to Mackenzie Entwistle. He had a goal, and he fought Reiko Gudis. Yeah. Which not a lot of people are willing to do that. Uh, and and he uh, continued to fight after he went to the ice, and none of the four referees on the ice went to break up the fight that Radka Gudis was involved in. So good no. job, refs. Yeah. Good job, and Whistle, work. for uh, sticking in there. <laughs> uh, Peter Mrazek stopped 27 of 29 duck shots. Yeah. After a bit of a shaky start, he really turned it around. Yeah. And welcome back, Andreas Athanasiu. Two assists, three shots on goal, six shot attempts. He looked like he hadn't missed a game. He looked he looked yeah. really solid in this one. He was, I mean, hey, the the, the speed was uh, was still there, and yeah, I mean, he was he was playing with uh, with what fifty? Um, what, how many games did he missed? Fifty three games missed. I didn't like, count, but a lot. A, I think it was about yeah. fifty three games missed for him. Um, so he was he was coming out there with uh, something to prove and wanted to catch up on his stats. So he got two assists, which was great. Yeah, he looked he looked really good, and like getting him into the lineup allows this Blackhawks team to have another NHL caliber player in the lineup, and that is a great thing because as we go into these final games down the stretch, and the roster starts to kind of look like the guys that are going to be here, that you know, number of them are going to carry over to next year. Performances like Sunday night performances like tonight um i know we're gonna probably hear a little bit about it in the chat but those kinds of games those kinds of wins for those guys who experience that like that's a that's a big it's huge deal. that's a big and deal. and you know i think that a lot is made of fighting in the game and there's been a spotlight on that because of matt rempe's emergence or whatever you want to call it but moments like that can really, to steal a a phrase from our buddies at What Chaos, they can really galvanize a team. It sure can. It really can. Like, you got guys sticking up for each other. You got Mm -hmm. guys who are, hey, you're going after after Mackenzie Entwistle and his gloves aren't dropped. Peter Mrazek, I'm going to grab you, Reiko Gudis. I don't want to, you know, like that stuff matters, and it means something. Mm -hmm. When you see guys on your team getting pushed around and bullied with no response, we've called it out many times this year where we'll see Bedard take a hard hit or something will happen. And there's no response. That's there's no excuse for that. It seems like 
over the last, and let's, I do want to pump the brakes a little bit. This has been the softest part of their schedule all year. They've played sure. Arizona a lot. They're playing Anaheim. They played the Caps. They played well against them, but lost. But this like, is also the same team that we said that at the beginning of the year, and they were and they were getting p- pasted. But in they games. lost eight one to the Coyotes, right? You know, so, yeah, but I, you know, I, I think it is it is meaningful to point out that it's not exactly the uh, you know eighties Oilers out there are playing against, but it's just yeah. they just look like a different team over the last yeah. handful of games, and a big difference is when your power play is effective. Yeah, it makes a world of difference. Yeah, uh, a, a good, uh, good power play, um, you know, is is hard to come by for a team that is in thirty second place. But uh, you know, in the last couple of games, thirty first, my friend. It's true. Sharks lost, so thirty uh, first. <laughs> Three power play goals this game. Yeah, uh, and they had what was it? Um, four, four or five against the uh, Coyotes last week Thursday night. Um, so I mean, yeah, it's it's you, you to have that kind of very close to that power play working. What is what do you keep pointing at? Uh, Evil, Evil Bills, Bills was like fourteen, 14 goals in two games. games. Isn't that more than we scored in January? They have seventeen in January. Yes, yeah, F- fourteen goals in two games. Uh, yeah, not uh, not a lot of goals scored in that stretch when uh, Bedard was out. But power play, it's 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 great to see. I mean, when you have guys clicking, when you have this uh, initiative that's kind of been instilled and and guys like Seth Jones uh, and Kevin Korchinski and Bedard, they're all getting the message of like, shoot more, shoot more often. Um, You know, don't, don't necessarily pass up an open uh, opportunity to shoot. If you think like, Oh, if I try and thread the needle on this one pass, like we might have an even better opportunity, take the best opportunity that's in front of you. Um, They've been doing that. And especially in the power play, it's, it's been working out. They're getting a lot of, Goals with traffic in front of the net, which is uh, great to see. Uh, we've been harping on them all season about net front presence and sh- keeping it simple. Shoot with traffic. It's working. Um, and, yeah, it's, it's, <laughs> it's working. Imagine if they if it started playing like this, uh, you know, 10 games into the season instead of uh, 66 games into the season. Yeah. Uh, here's a note from Ben Pope. Uh, Connor Bedard, 10 points in his last four games, 18 points in his 13 games since returning from injury. 51 points in 52 games this season. Yeah, but what's his plus minus? Uh, he was only a plus one in this one. Oh, shit, what a bum. That's the most important what set. an of absolute course. bum. Of yeah. course. Uh, yeah, the, I, the Calder discussion, it's it's over with. It's done. I mean, it never really should have happened, but no, it's over. No, but the, the, sliver <laughs> of, the sliver of hope yeah. that the, uh, the, the, the Brock Faber thumpers uh, had, uh, it's gone. I just imagine one of my favorite gifts is I believe it's from the movie Solo. It's a young young Han Solo like waving goodbye to his parents and he's crying. <laughs> That's Brock Faber waving goodbye to uh, <laughs> waving goodbye to the Calder chances. Uh, it's sad but true. Uh, uh, he was funny. awesome in this game. By the way, uh, I've seen this the last couple of ga- No expert. Uh, it's made of numbers and all sorts of stuff, so it might be hard to find their law. But he's saying that Bedard seems mad after the game. Seems mad. Yeah, he's guys. He just he is not a guy who is going to put any spotlight on himself. He hates it. Yeah, he hates talking about himself. He hates talking about his accomplishments. He hates, frankly, being interviewed in any way, shape, or form. He tries to yeah. wait us out at every practice because he doesn't want to talk. Well, I, Don't I mean, worry. He's, he's he's continuing his practice, but yes, I think there are some times where it's just like he's probably peeking around the corner and it's just like, are they gone yet? Yeah. Maybe I'll go back on the ice, shoot a hundred more pucks and then they'll be gone. Yeah. He, he, he's <laughs> just uncomfortable with the spotlight. And as a rookie, we talked about this last show a little bit where he is a, he is a, an old school mind, yeah. right? Like he, we talked about how over the last couple of games, he's really been taking charge and kind of doing it himself and initiating everything where Early in the year, I think you saw him deferring a little bit. Didn't want to come out and be like too much to start. Yeah, which to me is ridiculous. Just if you're great, go be great. Don't feel bad about it. Um, but that's changed, and I think still though, you're never going to find him be like, yeah, you know, I kicked ass tonight. Yep, five points. Tight Eddie old check for most by a rookie. Hell yeah, look at me. Yeah, he's just not going to be that way. That. And he's a subdued kid. Yeah, he's kind of introverted. He he's a hot. He's just not. You know, he doesn't have that electric personality but you know what i don't need the personality to be electric when the hockey is yeah i mean he he lets his personality show 
uh, when he's on the ice, um, you, you see him be very animated uh, when he's uh, having games like he did tonight, like he did uh, on Sunday night. And you see when he's animated, when he's frustrated, punching the boards, um, you know, when, when, when the goals aren't, uh, aren't falling. So, I mean, that's fine. I mean, most hockey players are going to be guys that do not want the spotlight uh, to be on them. Uh, I mean, it's one of the best, uh, I'd say one of the best uh, examples of Bedard's character is that, you know, the, the his first point was uh, an assist in a game that they won, and the pitcher was him smiling, and his first goal was in a game that they lost, and he is very much frowning yeah. in that pitcher because they didn't win, so... You know what's what's his so what he scored his first NHL goal of the next nine hundred to come doesn't matter we lost the game like yeah that's it that's his that's his mindset he wants he's he is a highly competitive person uh, and and he wants to win so now that he's come back from injury uh, you know I men- mentioned it a number of podcasts ago um, probably that time away seeing the team from a, a bird's eye view and seeing man. This team without me, they they have they got nowhere to go. So I need to I need to go out there and be myself. And I think he's, you know, realized what he's able to do at the NHL level. That's a good and point. now it's trans that, translating. I think that's a big part of it is and I do think having the bird's eye view was important. But I also think he's just like, you know, we saw him early this season several times, like, I'm gonna split the D. I'm going to go through three guys. Mm-hmm. That's not going to work here. Yeah. He's starting to figure that out. He's starting to figure out where to find those soft spots in the ice. Mm-hmm. Uh, and he's learning how to, like, manipulate his speed and his angles and the way he skates. Like, he is really starting to pick up on, okay, this is what I can and can't do at the NHL level to have success. And it's going to keep getting better and better and better. And I saw someone in the chat say, can you imagine 100 points next year? Like, yeah. This is the kind of guy he's going to be. Like, there's a reason, everybody, that the Hawks tanked last year. There's a reason, everybody, that it was a no-doubt number one overall pick. There were teams all over the league trying to get Connor Bedard. Mm -hmm. They knew that this is what he was going to be. And, yeah, there's a hell of a lot more growth to come, both offensively and defensively from him. But they knew this kid, you would plug him in right away, and on 50% of the teams in the league, he's going to be the best player. The other 50%, he's going to be the second or third best player. Yeah. At 18, he's that good. It was not hype. It was not someone being overblown. And I hate to draw these comparisons, but we're starting to see it already from fans from other teams. It happened to Sidney Crosby. It happened to LeBron James. Guys who came out young with a ton of hype, people just automatically hate and dismiss them. Mm-hmm. If you go see a Connor Bedard highlight on Bar Down or TSN or Sportsnet or, or whatever, or, yeah. it is just full of haters. And there's no more evidence you need to know that Connor Bedard rules than a bunch of haters in the comment section. 31 uh, franchises lost, well, 15 franchises lost the draft lottery. Uh, and 31 franchises are, are jealous that Connor Bedard uh, went well, to Chicago. Well, not the wild because they had Brock Faber. 30 franchises are jealous <laughs> <laughs> that uh, Connor Bedard went to Chicago. And, and yeah, I mean, he he is getting it. Um, he's figuring it out as soon as there's a, a little bit more talent around him in the next season to two seasons. Like, you know, we're I think we're going to be talking about a guy who will eventually be in that heart trophy conversation, um, be up there for... He's going to be up there with uh, with with a lot of the the points leaders, some of the top guys that are that are out there now. Like I I, I can see him have the ability, uh, the capacity to 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 reach that. If, what he's doing as a 18 year old who turned 18 after he was drafted, yeah, in like two weeks after he was drafted, and it was his 18th birthday. So he is a very young 18 year old rookie uh, in the NHL. Um, and for him to be at this point now, like, sky's the limit for where he could go. Yeah, uh, but no expert is concerned that Bedard's, like, mad and doesn't want to be here. Like, look, no, no, you've got him for two more years on his rookie deal. 
Yeah. Then you're going to sign him to an eight year deal because you have his rights. He'll be a restricted free agent after the after the next two. Probably an eight year deal. You're looking at at least ten years of Connor Bedard. Would be nice. So let's not worry about Connor Bedard wanting to leave. He doesn't want to leave. You, he knew that whatever team he, you think he'd be happy in Columbus right now or don't, Anaheim. Don't listen to. It's weird. It's a weird. It's such a Chicago thing. And I don't. I'm not gonna. I'm just taking a little detour real quick. It's the same thing with Caleb Williams. Is all these Bears fans are scared like. What if he's not great? What if he doesn't turn out to be this guy? And like, we know Justin Fields is pretty good. F that. Stop being afraid of greatness. Stop. Stop it. Connor Bedard is not leaving. He's happy to be here. He's going to kick ass in his city for at least a decade. Enjoy it. Why are we finding things to worry about? I, I, what? I, I don't it's so know. weird. I don't it's know. so weird. Yeah. I, I, the, the Connor Bedard wants to leave narrative. I would venture a guess the vast majority percentage of of people putting that out there into the world are not Blackhawks fans. They're, yeah, it's wishful they're, they're thinking. Like, they're likely Who located. They're, yeah, they're <laughs> likely located in British Columbia. Just like Patrick uh, Kane couldn't wait to be a Saber. Yeah, when can't wait for that to happen. He should. You know, he should have picked the Sabers. They, they, they right. torched his ass tonight. They kicked the shit out of him um, tonight. Yeah, uh, Bedard's moods. Uh, you just just care about how he looks yes. on the ice. If he's if he is looking like he did tonight on the ice, uh, like he did Sunday night, stick twirling after. Like if he's out there having a good time, he's putting up points. He's setting his. He has enjoy getting enjoyment out of setting his teammates up uh, for success. You know, you saw his reactions to uh, uh, setting up Kershev's uh, goal tonight. Like as long as those things are going well, his demeanor. Off the ice, you know, in the locker room, whatever, in interviews and stuff, it's going to be a different guy. And for a lot of NHL players, that is them going zoop and putting on, you know, media face, yeah, uh, rather than just being being themselves, being a hockey player. And it's 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 a hockey thing. All the top guys do it. There's a small percentage of the league that, you know, is is PK Subban or anything like that. You Jack know? Hughes is a little bit cocky. Yeah, Jack Hughes has got some personality. He's got some swag to him. Yeah. And maybe it'll come with Bedard, too. Sure. It just doesn't... He's just a, he's when, just a hockey dude. He's I, a hockey nerd. I have a feeling that when Bedard is not on a team in 32nd or 31st place, he'll probably have a little bit more of that because he'll probably feel like, okay, we've got some wins. We've beat some teams. Now we can maybe yeah. talk a little bit more. Yeah, that's a really good point. All right, we got some super chats we got to knock out. We're going to take a break first. Uh, we have 131 likes. We have 447 people watching. Ooh. The math is not checking out. It's not a good percentage. Come it's on, not guys. checking out. Do we have to do a like spike this early I in the show? I think we got to do a like suplex. Let's Ooh, go. a like suplex. All right. Five, four, three, two, one. Like suplex. Oh, smash right. that like button. Smash it. Give it a perfect plex. Give it a top rope elbow smash. Give it the Bret Hart off the second rope elbow. Mm. Setting up for the sharpshooter. Oh, yeah, that's a one good of one. my favorites. Oh, yeah. It's a beauty. Up that sharpshooter. I love that. So do that. We're going to get to your super chats here in a second. But first, I already cracked it for the ASMR earlier in the show. Mm -hmm. The celebratory yeah, cruise light. You. Oh, knock it out. Yeah, oh, there you go. Yeah, just a little. Wow, that almost sounded real. <laughs> It's good stuff. Uh, and Coors Light is good stuff because we've been using it for a lot of the season to take the edge off before the show. Just pound one of these and go, yes. okay, let's go talk to these people. No other beer company. Never. Never. I can't recall any. No. Um, None. But Coors Light, it is a chill yeah, beer, man. What, what Whether day is it today, by the way? I don't know. I don't what's know. that? It's Chicago Day. Yeah. It is yes. Chicago Day. Yeah, Chicago Day. It is Chicago Day. But uh, Coors Light's good for chilling, good for celebrating. Whatever you want to do, Coors Light helps you, helps you find moments to chill all year long. It is perfect after a Hawks victory because beer just tastes a little bit better. It does. After a win, especially when you put up seven points on those ugly-ass, horrible Anaheim Terrible. Ducks uniforms. They're Terrible. absolutely brutal. Man, it is so much better to drink a ice-cold Coors Light after a win. Coors Light is so cold. Why? Because it's cold lockered, cold filtered, and cold packaged for a smoother finish when it's time to chill. Open yourself a Coors Light. It's mountain cold refreshment, crisp and refreshing as the Colorado Rockies. When it's time to chill, Coors Light is the beer we at CHGO reach for. Get Coors Light delivered straight to your door with Instacart by going to CoorsLight.com slash CHGO Hockey. By the way, super helpful when you visit that website for us. CoorsLight.com slash CHGO Hockey. Yes. Celebrate responsibly. Coors Brewing Company, Golden, 
Colorado. And hey, the Blackhawks. Ooh, yeah. If you want to go see them put up seven goals uh, on their next opponent, that will be Friday night at the United Center. Hell yeah. Against the Los Angeles Kings. Win. Uh, <laughs> hey. We're getting cocky after two in a row here. Two in a row? <laughs> hanging seven on them? Why not do it? Hey, you know what uh, Triple Sevens does? Pretty lucky. Jackpot, baby. It's, it's good luck. You know where the draft is this year? Vegas. Vegas. You know what uh, the Blackhawks need to do? Win the lottery. 777. Seven. I think that. I, look, Let's go. If you're not into conspiracies, that, that one should get you into them, right? Hell What's yeah. not a conspiracy is the great deals you're going to get <laughs> with game time. I'm on, Smooth. I'm, I'm feeling great tonight. <laughs> game time. They are the best place to get tickets to your next big event. And you shouldn't have to worry about that with game time. They take the worries away. Uh, fast and easy process of getting tickets to all the sporting events, music, uh, concerts, comedy shows, theater events, anything you want near or far from you, you can get it through game time. They have some of the best uh, prices around with their best price guarantee. Uh, they have the views from your seat, all in pricing, so they're not going to you know surprise you with any uh, hidden fees or anything like that when you get to check out. That's what I love about game time is the price you see on their site is the price you're going to pay. You're not, not going to get to check out and be like, what are all these processing fees? None of that. Heard what that. you see is what you get uh, with game time. And I love their best price guarantee, which means if you scour the internet at other inferior ticketing sites and just so happen to come across uh, the same seat, same ticket at a better price, you can bring it to game time and they will credit you 110% of the difference. That is how much they care about making sure you are going to be getting the best value through them. So take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, use code CHGO, and you're going to get $20 off of your first purchase. Uh, terms do apply. Again, again, create an account, <laughs> redeem the code CHGO. That's C. H G O got it for twenty dollars off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest prices guaranteed. That's a good deal. I like that. All right, deal. we got some super chats to knock out here. Uh, first, McLovin. Oh, I'm sorry, you got him on the screen. My bad. Edward the first. Uh, I don't know why I say the Edward first. I always just add first. Edward underscore. I'm first. crowning Edward <laughs> to be Edward. Well, the there's first. a. What did we have the first or something? Maybe it was Edward. I don't. You're thinking remember. of Sophia the first. Um, Bedard uh, is the kind of guy who probably only going to show emotion winning a Stanley Cup or the Hart Trophy. <laughs> That's his standards. Yeah, I mean, look, he he shows emotion That's on true. the ice. Yeah, he, he celebrates. Does. He gets in guys' faces. He chirps probably a little more than he gets credit for. Like he's out there. He's a competitor. Yeah. Um, it's the spotlight stuff that he's not super into. But yeah, I mean, I mean and by the way, he will not celebrate a Hart Trophy. No, at least publicly. No. No, Stanley Cup. I mean, that's that's what he's uh, focused on the most. But I mean, right. think about uh, World Juniors, right? With Team Canada, he wins tournament MVP, wins the gold medal. Like the the whole tournament was about him and his performance. And the first question uh, in the in the first you know interview that he does with like I think it was TSN or something. Um, you know, they talk about, oh, you broke the record and you did this and that. And yeah. he's just like, I'm not talking about myself. Like, I'm talking about my teammates. Yep. And he's celebrating the gold medal with his team. Like, that's, and there was that, that is his, how he's wired. Where uh, he was did something, broke some kind of record and was the intermission guest. Mm -hmm. And they asked him about it. He's like, we're losing. Right, yeah. Right, like, he's like, I, I'm not, I didn't even know I did that. Mm -hmm. Cool, but I, I got a game to worry about. Well, like, tonight after the game, they say, oh, you tied the... Blackhawks rookie record for points in a game. And he was like, cool. Yeah. It's just, it doesn't, it doesn't register with him that it's not, you know, that, that individual marker is not his main focus. Right. Also, inner monologue. I knew I was going to do that. Um, all right. Let's go. Five dollars <laughs> here from our buddy, Windy City Hockey. It says Bedard was playing Duck Hunt today. Also, <laughs> fishbowls are for real men. 18 points in 13 he games. He's powered fish bowl. by the fishbowl. He just wears it all the time. I don't think there's a rule that says yeah, why you not? can't wear it. I mean, I have to check, but I don't know. It's working. It. Uh, two ninety eight, very specific from McLovin because <laughs> of Bedard. Get it? Ninety eight. Uh, uh, Connor Bedard is a Chicago Blackhawk. He is him. 
It's fun to remind yourself every now and then. It is, yes. And that don't be worried. He's not trying to leave. And Lebowski5 saying, I'm starting to think Kurashev may be a legit second liner on the team when they are really good. Before, I thought he'd be a nice third line scorer. I mean, Kurashev is 13 he... goals and 27 assists on the season. That's pretty solid. I hey. mean, and you can give Bedard credit for a lot of those, but he was picking up points when Bedard was out too. Yeah, he was he was one of the one of the go to guys offensively without Bedard around. Um, look, you you build chemistry with with Con Bedard and you have something going, something clicking. I mean, that's that's not a bad way to play hockey. Is is, is with him as your center. So uh, it's great to see that that those two guys are working well together. Um, you know, uh, Felino too. Like that, that, that top line. I would, I would love to not see that broken up the rest of the season. Like, let that play out. Um, let those guys God, really good. Uh, you know, work together and 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 especially Bedard and Kershev. Um, that seems like that's you know as as much as we thought. Oh, Bedard and Taylor Hall, they're going to be locked up with each other everywhere in the lineup this season. Uh, and then Taylor Hall's out, and then you know Kershev steps up and in, into that role and has really uh, come along. And and yeah, individually outside of Bedard. Kurashev has really taken some strides uh, this season. And, you know, it it really looked like, you know, yeah, topping out as a as a third line guy would be great. He's got some skill. Like he he's he's got some some finishing ability. Uh he's got a good two way game. Like he's he's got some skill. So I mean if if he and Bedard, you know, if they continue to grow chemistry together, continue to progress together, and Bedard helps elevate Kurashev's game and vice versa, like well, I mean, why not keep envision together that for line next year with Taylor Hall on that left wing? Yeah, you like could nothing do that. against Felino, but like that is a that's a line you could do that. Yeah, and like when it's time for the Hawks to be contenders, cup contenders again, I love Kurashev in that Chris Versteek role. Mm -hmm. That like third line offensive threat, put him on the power play, add scoring depth. Like I just if you start to look. <laughs> like if you really dissect where the Hawks are going, like you start to see like where these puzzle pieces are going to fit. Mm -hmm. Who's here? Who's not? Who's here for how long? And I think Kurashev has already solidified himself as part of this thing when they're good again. Yeah. I mean, he's still young, you know, what, Yep, 24 years old, 23. Is he even? Yeah. 20, I it might be 24. Um, He's still young. And uh, you know he's got one more year on on his current contract, and yeah, I would I would like to think he's going to be a guy um, that is going to be a part of of the group moving forward. Um, and yeah, I mean if look if if him and Bedard play really well together the rest of the season and into next season, there's nothing to say that like you could keep them together if they if they work really well together over the next few seasons, you can keep them together, and then that makes your second line and third line, as you get more talent in, you don't have to play all your, let's say your most well-rounded skill guys all together at the top line. You can move them around. You can put a guy who maybe is a top line talent on a second line and, and kind of even things out and give teams different looks to, to worry about rather than just saying, you know, top line is all your best players. Second line is all your second best players. Like you can move it, mix and match, move it around. And that's what those teams in the 2010s had you had yep. now granted you had a lot of all worldly talent, but you had guys that on other teams would have been top line options. Patrick Sharp for a lot of his time was a second line player on most other teams in, in his prime probably would be on, on the top line. And he did play on the top line a little bit. Um, but I mean, you just, you just have that could have that flexibility again for Luke Richardson as, as he's putting, putting things together. And that gives you a better ability to, you know, have four lines that are all dangerous in different ways. Yeah. Uh, Fake Wonder says, Kurashev is what Kunitz was for Crosby, and that's fine. Like, I, you know. Uh, I, sure. Yeah. I, and I saw Charlie saying, can, he said that Lazarus shot down his uh, Curry to Gretzky. Uh, he's not Yari <laughs> Curry. He's also not Artemi Panarin. Let's not go nuts. Uh, no, you're bacon no, drunk right no, now. No. But let's just be happy Too that much he's a guy. <laughs> I, think when, I think you're going to look at, if Philip Kurashev has a nice long career, and there's no reason he shouldn't, you'll probably see his best season be like 55, 60 points. What's his pace right now? He's not going to be a point-per-game kind of a guy or like a 100-point kind of a guy like uh, Artemi Panarin is or was. 
Um, by the way, do we have, uh, is Bedsy ready to go? Uh, just about, uh, just getting it in here. Uh, Want to do the super chat first? Yeah, let's we'll, do it. Sure. This is from uh, Spriggies. Spriggies. We have a bunch of guys in the pipeline and a few solid veterans on the team now. What trades or signings can you see the Hawks making this offseason? Okay. We've talked about, we talked a lot about that on the trade deadline show. Um, and Kyle Davidson sort of said it like, it's hard to really. They're not going big. Be specific because we don't know who's going to be around and who's not. But like the dream scenario is if Tampa just lets Steven Samkos walk, which would shock me. But if you get Steven Samkos for two years to come in here and be the left wing with Connor Bedard, yeah. cool. But it's going to be more stuff like that. The, the big, big names are the summer of 2025. That's Marner. That's Dreisaitl. Yeah. That's up. Uh, isn't uh, Ranton in the Ranton next year? No, Ranton, is that, year? Ranton is that year. I just, I'm just saying this now. I'm putting on record. I want Ranton in. Yeah. That, he is, he is Hosa. Get him. It's like the same, almost very similar kind of a player. Uh, I would love Miko Ranton on his team above even Dry Seidel. That's just me. Yeah. Um, all right. I think Connor's ready to go. This is Connor Bedard post game, and I'm, I'm going to warn you guys, he smiles a couple times. <laughs> I thought you know, there's a lot of positive, and um, for us to get another win like that, you know, it's been. I don't, you know, we haven't had too many, you know, back to backs like that. So um, for us to build on that, it was good. And obviously, you know, to get, get on the score sheet a little bit, science nice for sure. Have you been feeling any different play. out there the last two games? Sorry. <laughs> is there just, is it just one of those things where it's clicking right now? Are you feeling any different out there the last couple of games? Or I don't know. I mean, I always try to go in with the same mindset and try to play the same. And, um, you know, I think it's funny, you know, I had eight games straight without a goal. And then you have a couple of big ones. And, you know, people kind of forget about that. So, um, yeah, I don't know. I think I'm just trying to, you know, stick to stick to what works. And um, you know, I've been fortunate the last two to to get a couple. But um, you know, it, it is only two games, and obviously means nothing. If, uh, you know, we, we come out next game and, and don't 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 do great. So I uh, enjoy that, but kind of turn the page. Does You've been focusing goal, on. Does a twenty goal plateau mean anything to you? Is it those things that you you know, care about? Or um, I don't know. I mean, obviously scoring goals is nice, and. Um, you know, kind of those those round numbers, but uh, it's it's not something I really thought about too much. Um, but yeah, I guess it's good. We've been focusing you on the uh, the uh, casualty between you and Kershev, but you know, you Felino had four assists. What does yeah. he bring to that line to you guys? Yeah, I mean, I think you look at every single goal he's starting the play and, and probably the most important part of the play. Um, you know, just those those ball battles and, and keeping pucks alive for us. And um, you know, he makes some makes some really nice you know small area plays and. Um, you know, it's it's a lot of fun for us to, you know, we're I think we're you know learning how each other play obviously with with how much we play together this year and and he's so huge to it and obviously Kershaw is 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 pretty nasty so it's fun to play with him. Polina uh, was crediting you for like some of your plays away from the puck and uh, like on your goal when you kept the puck in uh, with those seconds left uh, to give yourself another offensive opportunity. Uh, do you feel like more of those kind of plays are coming to you now? Um. Yeah, I don't know. I think that's something I definitely want to get better at is uh, maybe away from the puck in, in all areas. And um, you know, I think a lot of it's just kind of our system. And, um, you know, I think the more you play in, in things and, and get used to them, then maybe the more instinctual it becomes. And, um, you know, that's obviously something I can definitely get a lot better at is, is away from the puck and um, without the puck. But uh, I think, you know, little improvements are, are good each game. Because it is encouraging with guys seemingly coming back. It's like once a week you've got somebody coming back and you guys are almost back to full strength after having almost the whole roster <laughs> seem like an injured reserve in early January. Is it encouraging looking forward that things like the power play are starting to click and more guys are getting chemistry as lines stabilized with health? Yeah, I mean, we were all obviously super pumped for Dubs. Um, you know, he, he looked great tonight. He's, you know, I think whenever he's out there, you notice him with his speed and, and skill. And, um, you know, whenever a guy comes back, we're obviously happy for them, and uh, they're excited, we're excited, so it kind of gives that extra boost, I'd say, and, um, you know, having, you know, tough, tough stress share with, with that, um, but, you know, having some guys back, it definitely gives a extra learning. Do you and Kershev just kind of have this sense of where each other's going to be all the time, or most of the time anyway? I'm just trying to give him a puck. Uh, <laughs> you know, I think he's, he's so good at getting himself open um, when, when someone else has it, and, uh, man, I love playing with him. He's, he's so skilled, and uh, I think the best part, we're always kind of talking about plays and um, or even in practice, kind of working on stuff together, and that makes it so much fun and, and um, you know, makes it a little easier to build chemistry just just, just with how much we're trying to work together and, um, you know, when 
when he has the puck, and make something happen. And, and then, like I said, when he's when he doesn't have it, he's getting open, getting in a spot. So, um, yeah, it's, it's a lot of fun for me to play with him. There's your number one star of the game, Connor Bedard, with a goal and four assists. Fun to play with. Yeah. Kurashev. Yeah. Definitely. And you uh, kind of corrected me. He's, you said he's on a 50-point pace. He, year. Yeah, quick math. He's got uh, 40 points in 59 games played uh, this season. So that would be, this was game 66. So he has missed seven games. So seven mi- or 50, 82 minus seven, 75 points, or 75 games. 50-point pace uh, for a 75-game season uh, for Philip Kershev. And, yeah, I mean, that's he's... That is, uh, if you would have come into this this season and said Philip Kershev would be on a 50-point pace, you would give that two thumbs up. Yes. Take that every day. <laughs> and you'd um, think Connor so Bedard had great. 150 points. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, uh, it's, it's good. It's, it's good that you, I mean, there has been a lot of rough points of this season. Yeah. Uh, if you're looking for, for, for a positive, having a guy like Philip Kershev uh, and Connor Bedard working well together, building chemistry like that is that is a big win. Well, and this is when things were so bad. This is kind of how we kept people afloat. Was like, all right, take the result away. Think about the players that matter mm. and how are they performing. Yeah, Bedard, Kurashev, Vlasic, Korchinski. Jones is here for a long time, so he matters. Yes. Right? Uh, like those kind of those are the ones you're like, okay, if I focus on this, more often than not, I'm gonna feel really good about stuff. Yeah, feel and better. Like Korchinski has had his moments this year where he struggled. He's a 19 year old defenseman. It's gonna happen. That's gone from junior to the NHL. Yeah. Like that's a massive adjustment. Kale McCars are not uh, a dime a dozen. No, they are not. So uh, so for for Korchinski to jump in and how the season he's had, like Ultimately, like I would say, net positive for for him. I agree. A good a good learning experience. I would much rather him be having the season he's having this year in the NHL rather than just you know bum slaying in, in the WHL and being like, all right, like that's cool for highlights and stuff and like good for his like confidence as a WHL player. But he's he needs to grow into being. Uh, a confident NHL player. And he's, I, I think he's getting there for sure. Uh, Ira says, Hey guys, old viewer been busy with school and haven't gotten to watch the post game show in a long time. Hello, Ira wanted to say, keep doing what you're doing. Go Hawks. Well, we don't have a choice. Thanks this Ira our job. Contractually. We, will. we wanted to anyway. Yeah, Games you, like this make it a lot more fun. Yeah. That's for damn sure. It, it definitely does. Like, but even on the worst nights, I'm still having fun. Let's yeah. I mean, yeah, there's worse ways to, yes, to make a paycheck, <laughs> but, um, yeah, I mean, uh, you know, the game uh, Sunday night was a lot of fun. Um, the game tonight was a lot of fun. Uh, it was a chaotic game, and being on the winning side of a chaotic game yeah. is so much fun. You like, can see I, John Gibson, like, well, very frustrated. Looks like I got to go fight. <laughs> I've given up six goals. Do, uh, now I got to go fight. Do you kind of like toss the stick? Like, do you think he knew? That crossing the red line is an is yes. a game misconduct. I think he he's just like this is like a better word. This is my uh, <laughs> this is my way out of this game. Um, maybe I'll get some punches in. Uh, yeah, yeah, interesting. Um, but yeah, I mean it's 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 fun uh, to to win these kinds of games. It's fun to win any games. Like I I know this is a last season was you know the tank season. This season has turned into you know we're really paying attention to. F- getting the first overall pick and everything again. Um, but still winning games is so much fun. It's yep. so much better than losing games. I know that's a hot take, but like I'll take nights like this a, a thousand times. Hell yeah. Um, we're going to play Nick Felino here in a second. Reminder, he joins the show Thursday at 2.30. A lot of people are asking where Landon Slacker is going to slot in on Friday. I mean, Donato has been really good lately. Mackenzie Entwistle scored. Yeah. Process process of elimination. Reese Johnson. Maybe. Uh, we'll 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 have to see. Um, Donato. I'm writing about it tonight for uh, for Hawks hits. Uh, he was playing like a guy that does not want to lose his roster spot to yep. Landon Slager. So, um, that's when when you have uh, when you're one of those guys that's in that bottom six spot. And you know, new shiny toys is is in the locker room. 
Um, you got to make sure that you're not giving Luke Richardson any reason to take you out of the lineup. Could be Taylor Radish, too. I mean, could, he hasn't really been benched be. this year. Could He's be. decent on a penalty kill, but there was that moment in this game where he had the two-on with, with Athens CU, and he had the good shot, and you're like, you knew he wasn't going to shoot. Yeah, he, he made was, the pass. Snake, but made a great pass. Yeah. Gibson made a great save. Gibson was really good in this game for a while, and then everything, they just wouldn't stop taking penalties, and everything got away from him. Yeah. But uh, he made a couple huge saves early to keep it close. Um, but, yeah, I'm... I'll be interested to see where Slager goes in. I think... Going in for Reese Johnson could be a possibility. They could also maneuver some guys around the lineup. I know he scored tonight and got in the fight with with Gudis, but maybe Entwistle is a guy that shuffles out of the lineup. But we'll we'll have to see for sure. I mean, Reese Johnson he plays a role uh, on this team to be a that physical presence. I'm not so certain that Luke wants to trade a player like Reese Johnson in for a guy like Landon Slager who can play physical, yeah. but it's his first game in the NHL. Like he's not going to go out there and, and be a wrecking ball. Like that's just not his game. Yeah. Um, all right, let's get to Nick Felino here. Uh, and we'll, uh, should be hearing from Greg anytime now. So here's Nick Felino. He has to get rewarded in certain ways for, you know, the hard work you put in and, and need to continue to do right? it. It's two games that we've won in a row now. And, um, it's a good feeling, but it's it's harnessing that feeling and, and trying to make sure we manifest that into more wins and more good habits, winning habits. This thing will be more than just the power play tonight, too. Yeah, I just thought the jam from the whole team, right? Just the, you know, the power play seems to be our engine right now, and that gets us going. But you know, it's it's everyone contributing in a certain way, and you know, uh, we we get one uh, against us on the power play, and boom, our, our power play gets one right back and kind of gets the the game evened up and, and us settled in. And, um, you know, that's those are big. Those are big moments. And then, you know, even just right before a period to get a goal, or right before the end of a period, I mean, to get a goal is it's nice to get the momentum swings in your way. So we're starting to understand that and, and not putting ourselves in positions where it's going the other way against us. And, um, you know, it's nice to see that we're, we're learning. I'm, I'm, I'm still watching and, and uh, not getting ahead of myself, but I, I, I'm obviously encouraged by what I've seen. And, and I'm just, you know, I'm, like I said, I'm thrilled for the fans. It's been a, it's been a hard year. Uh, so to get seven at home here is a nice feeling. Who do you think of Marazic jumping into that? Program? I loved it. Yeah, I loved it. I loved it. I wish I was out there. Those are those are my those are my favorite things. Sometimes <laughs> every guy for themselves and every guy for each other too. Right? I'm so proud of our guys the way they stood up for each other. And you know, that's a team that's obviously frustrated on the other side. And uh, we handled ourselves really well. And uh, I love seeing Petey in there. He's he's an ultimate team guy, and uh, he loves mixing it up. He, he definitely does it with his mouth. So it was good to see him jump in his fist too. <laughs> what did you get from? Pardon? When did you notice Gibson was going? Oh, I was waiting for him. I he's I played against that guy a long time. I, I actually like the way he he's got some jams. So I was waiting for when he was gonna. He kind of came slower than I thought. I thought he'd beeline it down there, but um, yeah, that, that made for an entertaining night for the fans for sure. Connor with a five point game tonight. If you run out yeah. of kids to that's it. That's all you got. It's disappointing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I'm, I'm proud of him. I, I mean. You know, that's that's what he can do for us. And I, I, what I really liked, and, you know, maybe this won't get written about, but just how, you know, he's under the puck. If you saw the the, you know, the first five-on-five five goal we have, he comes underneath me, I give it to him, and now they're on a two-on-one, right? He, he's not ahead of the play. He's not trying to, you know, you can see he's understanding now his positioning as a centerman and as a player in this league to, to create offense. And then his natural abilities take over because of that. So um, that's what I'm thrilled about is, is watching him mature as a, a young man and, and player in this league that's going to dominate for years to come but understanding how he's going to do that you know and it's it's figuring that part out and um, it's pretty scary because if he starts figuring it out and has nights like this uh, he's going to put the whole league on notice. I know well, it's worked well with you and him and Philip, but just what have you seen between him and Kershaw? Yeah they have a cool bond I really like the, the way they talk to each other and they seem to really enjoy each other I kind of feel like I'm the dad like overseeing their, their conversations <laughs> and, um, a little bit so I try to get in there but I can't really relate on some aspects but I think that's on purpose. They kind of they shy away as soon as I come skate by. Um, <laughs> but I, I'm not. You know, you need that. You need like a you know a guy that you you play off of and that understands you and and that you, you can kind of gravitate towards. And you know, I'm I'm I think that's awesome that they both have. That. I think Kirsch has, has really excelled because of that too, right? He's got a guy that that sees the game at, at a level that he's trying to get to, and um, you know, it's it's really pushed him as a player. And uh, they've had uh, great success. Obviously, you saw it tonight and, and throughout the whole year. So it's encouraging for our team and. You know, we want that to continue.
you're talking about uh, Bedard's kind of heads up plays. What about on his goal when he kept the puck in uh, to keep you guys in the zone? On the yeah, the Bedard goal. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, that's just that's you know we're hunting and, and that's what I'm talking about. It's like it's it's understanding you know when to at the end of a period. Uh, you know you're. We, a couple times this year, we've gotten scored on because we're almost cheating it. Instead of you know on the right side of it, he battles, bang, he hits it, opens himself up, and we support each other really well. And I'm able to hit Kirsch, and those two do the rest. So he, that's what I'm really encouraged about with with Bedsy. He's, he's starting to understand how he can use this defense to create offense and. You know the greats do that, right? It, it, it's a hard league, and there's great players. So if you can, uh, you know, find a way to take get an advantage when you ha don't have the puck and put yourself in a great position to, to turn it over or put someone in a position to do it, turn it over for you, then now you're walking down Main Street like he was, and, uh, and it's a great sign for us. There's Nick Felino. One mm -hmm. more reminder: Thursday, two thirty. He will be in a chair. It's not there yet, but it will be over there. It will be over, and here. he will be over there, and we'll be talking Hawks and hockey and all sorts of stuff with Nick Felino. So, so set yourself a reminder, Thursday, 2.30, uh, with Nick. By the way, tomorrow at 3, Pete Blackburn from What Cast will be on with us. So a did guesty we, week. Did we piss three? off DJ or something? Wait, Why has he never joined our show? He was on the last time we did it. Last For time we had them on, both of them were on. What was time did you say the show is? Mm. He's on at 3. Oh, but the but sh okay. show is at 2.30. Yeah. He's yeah. coming on the second half. I'll say this. If anyone uh, needs to know what time the show is, subscribe. Subscribe. There you go. You'll a get subscribe notified vibe. Time. That's what uh, Steven said yesterday for the Bears. A subscribe vibe. Well, he doesn't work on our show anymore. So. Who? Well, Never we're on the same company. Yeah, I don't know who he is. Okay. Hashtag traitor. Uh, okay. Subscribe so, uh, uh, suplex. A like spike. Subscribe suplex. Subscribe suplex. Love it. Do it. Do that. All right. We're going to uh, take a break, and Greg is standing by. But first, we're going to tell you about Circa. Yeah. Circa. They're a lot of fun. Uh, they sure are. They are one of the best sports books, if not... The best One of, come on sports now. book uh, around. What makes them great are their tight money line splits and low hold Sweet. models. Circa will strive to keep games, for example, at a minus 110 split on their menu, unlike other books which may have the same game at minus 115 or 120. Circa Sports keeps a little mon as little money as possible on large market bets, especially compared to other sports books. They also uh, have great uh, high app limits and great transparency. They do not limit players based on winning. They want you to take all their money as possible. Yes, Jay, would you like to share well, the class? There was a comment that Law and I are laughing at that we'll show you when you're not looking. Okay, sounds good. When you're not reading. <laughs> uh, so, Circa, they don't limit uh, good good betters. Mm -hmm. They want you to keep on uh, winning and keep on betting, and they encourage their betters to download and explore all different sports uh betting apps available compare the lines and see that you are going to get the best deals uh, with circa so download the circa sports illinois app at circasports.com slash illinois dash app uh, sign up today also be on the lookout for circa events watch parties and tailgates uh, if you or someone you know may have a problem with gambling call 1-800-GAMBLER that's 1-800-426-2537 or text GAMB GAMB to 833 or visit areyoureallywinning.com. There you go. That's how you do it. And if you do want to really be a winner, mm -hmm. you want to go to allchgo.com and become a diehard today. Yes. We've got our brand new line, the, the Chicago collection, all sorts of new merch celebrating our two year anniversary. We've got our March 26th Blackhawks takeover at the United Center. That is sold out. We yes. open that up to diehards first. They saved 20%, mm -hmm. and they got first crack at our takeover in the 100 level for Hawks and Flames. Mm, yes. MLB opening weekend. They'll be hosting our CHGO Sox home opener at Ballpark Pub and the uh, away home opener for Cubs at the Country Club. Head to our events page at allchgo.com for upcoming <laughs> events and all details. And remember... You get access to everything, including our premium written content this week. We're pushing our Hawks stuff down a day. Rebuild reports out Thursday because the Ice Hawks have a couple big games in a row here. They won tonight. They won tonight. Boom. Um, so that'll be out Thursday. My Blackhawks beat will be out Friday. I'm going to write about who should return and who should not in terms of the Blackhawks uh, restricted yes. free agents next Armchair year. GM. So check that one out. And, of course, like we said, 20% off all of our events, 20% off all of our merch, Free shirt when you become a member. Access to our members only uh, Discord. The other night we gave away a Corey Crawford commemorative puck. Yeah. If you wanted to play, you got a Hawks number. First goal scorer one. 
So uh, we sent a winner out. So that'll be shipped out tomorrow. So lots of reasons to become yes. a diehard. You diehard. Aside from just uh, supporting us in a huge and important way. All right, let's go out to the United Center and bring in our buddy Greg Boyce. And Greg, the question on everybody's mind, it's not been answered on Twitter. What is the deal with Seth Jones? Why did he leave the game early? He served the 10 minute misconduct for Peter Morazic. Ah, uh, uh-huh. there you go. So he's fine. I'm he's willing to fine. fight Luke Richardson because he cost me money on <laughs> prize picks. Yeah, he I needed that me one too. more shot. <laughs> me too. But uh, uh, he tough. said, you know what? The game was the game was pretty much over at that point. Seth has played so many minutes. Give him a ten minute break. Give him the give him the night off early. He nice. deserved it. So uh, that's uh, that was the uh, clarification there. Yeah, we were all a little confused. That's good. That's a relief. That's yeah, because I was gonna say like. I've had this little cl- like uh, cloud over my head for the last forty five minutes, wondering like why is there no news on this? What is going on? <laughs> why is Seth Jones not out there? It's concerning. No, he's okay. Good. How was the? Uh, it, we we've heard from Nick Felino. We've heard from Connor Bedard. How was the the vibe from uh, Luke Richardson uh, tonight after a second seven goal game and win in a row? Well, obviously he's he's happy with the effort, but was quick to point out numerous times uh, during his presser that like, hey, this is just two games of 82. We've got to figure out how we can do this every time out. Like he's been pushing this, you know, play this way all season long. They've they've kind of turned a corner here three out of the last four games. They've they've really played well. Um, But he, you know, says it's just two games out of 82. Uh, you know, it's going to, it's, it's going to stink if we come out Friday night and lay an egg, uh, it's going to feel like, you know, it, it really didn't even happen. So, uh, you're only as good as your, your last game until your next game. True. Yeah. I just, I, I had to imagine just overall the feel in that room had to be so much better, so much looser. Uh, it's her first back-to-back win since December 9th, you know, last and it's, year. it's, I, I'm I'm just I, I don't know maybe it's unprofessional of me to feel this way but I'm just kind of happy for these dudes like for the most part they're all really solid guys and you could tell it's been getting to them like losing night after night after night even <laughs> why after, would even that every, be unprofessional well I don't know you're not supposed to like am I rooting for no the team or whatever the press box, right yeah bro. Like, I, I just Jay, think, look around you <laughs> I understand that. I understand that. I'm just saying, though. Like, I just think that this is why we don't have uh, union cards, man. Stop. <laughs> yeah, I don't have to pay for a piece of uh, laminated plastic to be in my wallet. Um, yeah. Anyway, my point being, you know, objectivity aside, like you see these guys going through it. You're around them several days a week. Yeah. It's like, damn. It's almost. It's like just sad to watch. Yeah. You know. I mean, so yeah. when you see them get rewarded, it's like, all right, it mm-hmm. feels good. Yeah, you're right. This is you want. You know, obviously, uh, f- fandom or not, we want this team to win games. Just look at how many people we have in our in our post game show. Now, imagine if this was a playoff win. Like, we want this oh team God. to do good because our business will succeed. But you also want them to do good because you get to know these guys over the course of an eighty two game season. We get to see them interact with each other in the room. We get to see, we're at practice. We see how much work they put in, and to just go through all that effort and rarely ever get rewarded. You feel for them. So when they do get those, those big wins, and I think a lot had to do, you know, obviously getting healthy and getting guys in proper spots have helped. But I think that first road win in Arizona kind of loosened things up a little bit. Uh, I know the first period in Washington was bad, but they recovered and played well in the, in the second and third period. Uh, and then since coming home, they've been fantastic. So um, I think that road win in Arizona really kind of got this team a little loose, a little, you know, relaxed and saying, OK, yeah, we know how to do this. And uh, it's been a different team uh, since then. Yeah, definitely got the sense that there was some some weight off the shoulders. Yeah. With that win against Arizona. Uh, we haven't really talked about it much today because there's been so much other stuff going on, but. Athanasiu coming back finally, uh, first game since November 9th, a pair of assists. Uh, did Luke have anything, any comments on his game? He looked like his old self, I thought. You know, Luke was said he did exactly what he asked him to do, 
play fast and shoot first. And that's exactly what he did. He right away, his first shift, you know, he got himself a scoring chance, hit the side of the net, uh, but had a couple assists, thought he had a goal there, uh, but Gibson made a good save on him. Uh, but he was, he was drew one penalty, probably could have had two or three other penalties. There was a play in the third period where he was blatantly tripped and yeah. kind of got up palms up and, you know, but at that point it was like the refs were like, I just want to get the hell out of here. Like, <laughs> um, Bullshit. so, but he was, he was excellent tonight. And, and I know, like we've said, like, we all know Anthony C is not like, you know, he's not a heart trophy winning player, but what he brings to this team has been missing for the last 124 days. And we saw that with his first shift. He's the fastest guy on this team. And he's somebody, the opponents have to be aware of when he's on the ice. And there's not, there's, there's not many guys outside of that top line that we could say makes defensive, you know, makes other defenses be aware of where he is. Yeah. And that's, that was a, a a huge factor uh, missing from this team with a fantasy you out, especially with Bedard and a fantasy you out, like just the speed oh, that yeah. this team could not play with was just, it was, it was hard. It was, it was hard to watch that team, uh, go <laughs> up and down the ice. And some of those games like against Colorado and stuff like it was just like, Oh my gosh. Yeah. Like you had no answer to that. So now having a fantasy you there gives you that element of like a guy who can, who can go over the top and, and break the game with his speed. Well, Greg, you came on late. Um, we've covered a lot of stuff, but I want to give you the floor. Uh, the wave happened at the United Center tonight. Oh, Your thoughts? <laughs> um, it was just the weirdest third period I think I've ever covered a game. Uh, the wave started in the 300 level, and then the whole United Center started doing it. Um, you know, I don't know. Maybe it's my old age. I used to be, oh, you can't do the wave. Now I'm like, eh, whatever. You paid to be here. Do whatever the hell you want. Because, like, a minute after the wave started, that's when we had the big, you know, ruckus with, with the almost goalie fight and Mackenzie Entwistle standing up to Radko Gudis, which, by the way, big kudos to our mm-hmm. guy, Mackenzie Entwistle. Not many guys would go toe-to-toe with Radko Gudis. He's one of the toughest guys in the league. Yeah. And he's he stood with him, and then Mrazek jumped in to, to, to kind of help him out when – when Radko had him in a vulnerable spot and didn't let up. So uh, that was weird. And then right after the wave, they started a Green Bay sucks chant, which we all can probably say is, is <laughs> sure, we agree with that, but maybe not the right um, venue for that. But then, uh, you know, um, and the, but after that, then we got the Detroit sucks chant. There were no more waves after, after the big fight. So uh, uh, it was a very – uh bizarre night tonight but damn it was that fun the last two nights here have been a lot of fun tons, and t- tons of fun fun hasn't there haven't been many fun nights here at the united center since the three of us started coming here every night and these last two nights have been a lot of fun and it's just kind of like you know it's just a thought of like man this is what it could be every night when if this rebuild goes right in a couple of years this is going to be such a fun team yeah, I I think the the atmosphere tonight was uh and it's look, it's <laughs> it's the coming into tonight it's 30th place versus 32nd place on a Tuesday night post trade deadline like all the ingredients are there for a snooze fest game uh and it was completely the opposite of it. So the at- atmosphere was 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 awesome. The product on the ice was was great for the Blackhawks tonight. Um yeah, I mean, you just you just kind of uh, relish in the opportunities to uh, to have those kinds of nights, and uh, if you enjoy it by doing the wave, sure, you, you you let it slide. Hey, if you're doing a wave when the Blackhawks are winning six to two, I got no problem with that. If you're doing a wave and the Blackhawks are losing six to two, well, then I'm like, hey, stop having so much fun. That's true. Yeah, I. I uh... I've stopped gatekeeping for the most part. On yeah, I don't care. Do what you want. I mean, it also, Tuesday it does, night. I will say it does when it actually happens, it does look cool. Yeah. If you catch it on the broadcast, it's, it's, like if, it, if you're, you know, like if it actually co- like happens where everyone's participating it is kind of cool to witness. So we'll whatever. have to remember to have add. Fun. Well, actually we'll have to remember to ask Nick on Thursday, his uh, thoughts on the wave. I would imagine like for a hockey player, that'd be really distracting. 
Yeah. I would think. It is, I mean, it's kind of distracting as a hockey reporter. You're kind of like, what is everybody <laughs> cheering about? What the hell is going on here? And like, it takes your eyes away from the game. But, uh, you know, they, the, the you could tell this season there's a lot of first time game attendees in the building on a nightly Good. basis, which is awesome. You know, the more the merrier. You know, we, we keep talking grow the game, grow the game. You can't grow the game if people don't come. Uh, but there's some things that need to be worked on going forward as this team gets better. Uh, the ch- chant is let's go Hawks, not the let's go Blackhawks with the claps after that. Knock that shit off. It's just it's not what we do. Yeah. Uh, and the, uh, the waiting for the whistle thing needs to be taught again, at least in the 300 level. Uh, as an old season ticket holder and, and seeing people get up with like 12 seconds left in the period or while the power play starts, it, it still bothers me. So I think, you know, instead of getting mad at first timers for not knowing the etiquette, you just got to teach them and say, hey, buddy, here's how it really works. So the second time they do it, then you can yell at them. There, there have been some uh, some near fights and uh, yeah. some some fuck yous thrown uh, across the crowd right in front of the press box this season. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. Maybe they need to. That was just from Jay. Yeah, that was when <laughs> Greg stole my gummy bears. Um, so, yeah, maybe they, they, they need to redo the uh, the etiquette video, or maybe we need to redo well, the etiquette How about this? Video, like, or? just um, be aware of people around you. I, yeah, you shouldn't have to be told to not stand up in front of people who are watching an event. That's like, asking too much. The what do you society do? has no all awareness time. anymore. Just, no, so, no, it's not no just awareness you. around. There are other people in the world than you. Well, and also Captain Pudwack. Uh, a lot of selfish people out there. Yep. Isn't there? Didn't they? Someone said that there's no longer ushers at the 300 level. No, they're there. Are they? They are, they are okay. less uh, engaged than the because I, I noticed on our takeover that, there was okay. a, gotcha. there was a, a woman standing there working our section, right. um, but she never she didn't have her stop sign. She didn't really, and maybe it was just her, um, mm-hmm. and she's probably not paid well, so. Do you? Um, <laughs> but uh, she was just kind of leaning against the thing and checking tickets when they need to be checked. Okay. So, yeah. 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 Give, give well, them I get you want to have a friendly atmosphere and, like, you don't want to be restrictive and make people. But at the same time, by educating people and saying, hey, what we do here is we wait for a whistle, you are creating a safer atmosphere because it's one thing for an usher to say it. Yeah. It's another thing for a guy who's 10 beers deep. To say it, and then the other person's ten beers deep, and then what happens? They throw a beer at somebody, yeah. and then you get a fight yeah. in the crowd yeah. between Blackhawks back fans, and then you end up on World Star, and it's, it's it all could be avoided. World Star. Back in the uh, back in the early Cup days, those first few years, they had Jonathan Taves do a, a PSA on the big screen at the beginning of every game, telling people, you know, hey, we wait for the whistle. Hey, you know. All the, all that stuff that we just talked about. So maybe it's time for next season. You have uh, Connor Bedard do that same type of thing, or, or Nick Foligno, or whoever. Maybe you make it a team effort. Uh, you know, maybe Mackenzie Entwistle gets on the big screen and says, "If you get out of your seat while the puck's in play, I'm going to punch you in the face." Yeah. Uh, but whatever it takes. But yeah, it, it's you're going to have a lot of new fans uh, over not just this year, but over the next you know, five, six years as this team gets better, you're going to get the bandwagon coming on again. And that's great. I love a packed house. I love a demand for tickets. It's good for everybody. Uh, but you, you are going to have to do something to, to educate the new fans on proper hockey etiquette just to avoid ugliness. Yeah. Uh, our friend Katrina is in the chat saying they don't have enough, enough ushers. They rotate. And it's crazy how bad it is in the 300 level. Yeah, I mean, we we can tell from our perch. If you're at a game, yeah, we're we, in the front we, row of the press box, and we, we can it. we can yeah. see and hear a lot yeah. of what's going on right there. And um, yeah, there's there's been a few times where it looks like it's gonna get it's gonna get rough. So uh, hopefully, uh, we know that they the Hawks do listen to our show, and hopefully they're hearing this because um, it is something that probably needs to be addressed one way or another. Because look, with new fans come you know the 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 learning comes the learning curve Mm -hmm. and it's fine like again greg your your point is correct the first time hey uh i saw you got up next time just be aware like typically at a hockey game people wait for a whistle before they get up out of their seat and then you got plenty of time to get down and you're not blocking anyone's view and 95 percent of people be like oh yeah sorry yeah yeah, thank you thank you for the heads up but if you start screaming at them right away it's just gonna it gets ugly and then that turns people off and scares them away and you don't want that so 
uh, be cool. I mean, Wrigley Field's got the the signs, you know, watch for flying bats and balls. Like, yeah. you put up, put up some signs at the UC, like, hey, wait wait for a stoppage in the game before you go to or leave your seat. And there's a 98-year-old woman that'll give you a rock bottom if you do. You know? <laughs> yeah. Don't, don't mess with those ladies. <laughs> they'll, they'll take you down. All right, Greg, we're going to let you go, man. Thank you for the coverage. We will see you tomorrow. Show at 2.30. Pete Blackburn at 3. Should be a lot of fun. See you then. All right, I guess I'll show up. All right. That's Greg Boyson live from the United Center. All right, we got to wrap up the show, but we got our segments to do first. Law, what are we ready for first? Uh, Good question. Uh, Let's start with the fourth star because who is ready? Yeah, because it is ready. The fourth star of the game, we had our nominees were uh, Peter Mrazek. We had uh, Mackenzie at Whistle. But the winner of the four star of the game, Andreas Athanasiu. Double A. Back for his first game since November 9th. Picks up a pair of assists, 1603, three shots on goal, six shot attempts, and two takeaways. By the way, that Entwistle goal, that's all him. He stole the puck, got it to Entwistle. Entwistle made a nice move on the goal. Nice move, yeah. But go watch that replay. That play happens because of Athanasiu's hustle. Mm -hmm. So, and man, there was that shift in the first where he was like, he's like on rocket skates oh yeah i was like burning <laughs> that is a different level of speed mm-hmm. so uh good to have him back congrats on the four star of the game but now we need to enter connor's corner connor's corner where's the music oh, oh boy oh lord oh boy it's under c found it c for connor connor bedard one goal four assists five shots on goal and boy, you just cannot wait to get out of here. 2021 of ice time, five <laughs> shots on goal. And he had 11 shot attempts. A little down night for him in the shot attempt category. Hey, green <laughs> light. I, I saw was the, it 16? Uh, over three and a half shots on goal. And uh, The, the shots on goal have been it. tougher with him lately. I was a little concerned. Yeah. The we shots. I have been staying away from the prize picks shots on goal from Bedard. Actually, the Caps game. They were three and a half I today. think I took the under and I got it. Wow, good, um, good for you for rooting for less than. I know, but I'm. But money's that's fun a too. Lot of, that's a lot of fun. <laughs> I do like money. <laughs> I, I think that is like the first time I've gone under on a player on Prize Picks ever. You mean less than? Less than. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. 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 The less than. You root for the more thans. Yeah, I usually want to see a lot of lots of things happen. But what was it? Sixteen. Sixteen shot attempts against uh, Washington. Washington. And twelve and eleven. Was, was it twelve last game? Twelve. 12 or 13. Yeah. And then 11 tonight. Yeah, he's, hey, he's going for it. That's what, you, that's what you want to see out of him. All right. And now, before we go, we have to name the winner for Hoosier Hawk. And oh, yeah. who had Connor Bedard tonight? It I was Mario. Sure did. Still trailing JGWO uh, by the score of uh, 40 to 26. But you got some catching up to do, but you'll catch up. Yeah. You'll catch up. 26 wins for Mario, 19 for Greg. And uh, what I have twenty, just twenty one thing went away. Yeah. Twenty one. Uh, just, just, just wait, just wait. There's, That's a look, you know, man. There's a. Uh, I mean, you don't need to see to, to do a podcast. Uh, you don't. It's just, true. Just wait. There, you know. I'm not. I'm not saying there's some uh, some back back room conversations happening on. But, there are. Uh, you know, we'll see. We'll see how long that alliance lasts. I felt really good about my Seth Jones pick when he scored that power play goal. I'm like. Pfft. In the bag. Yeah. And then, or not. Yeah. Well, I mean, <laughs> hey, there's there's a reason you can only pick Bedard uh, week. So, so, so many times. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, I mean, he had a, a, a fantastic game. Um, and more to come. That's right. I'll take it. All right. We're going to wrap things up. Thanks to Law for running the show today. We appreciate it as always. Like we've said, we are back tomorrow at 2.30. We'll talk to Pete Blackburn at 3 o'clock from the What Chaos Show and before we go, just to out of respect to Pete, we should do one final like spike. You guys think? Yeah, go for it. Absolutely. All right. Three, two, one, like spike. Spike Ooh. that like button for us. We're at 318, which I believe is the season high aside from the season opener. So we got to get over, what, 330? And we'll be happy with that. Yeah. So smash that like all. button for us. We're not, we're not we ending the show until that. we get to 500 likes. How about that? <laughs> um, You can stay. 
We we have we got a bop it laying around here, right? Something so. Oh my god, that's that's copywritten. <laughs> and we All like right. to f- thank the four ducks fans in the chat for the thumbs down. Who ducks? Stop glazing, Bedard! You're glazing. What does that, that mean? Be ridiculous! Excuse me? On, uh, excuse me? <laughs> just use your judgment for what. That's the new term for. Don't ask me if to you're use praising my someone, oh. like over praising someone. Okay, they sure. say mm-hmm. the kids call it glazing, yeah. the, and if you the, use your imagination, you could probably. Stupid. The kids need to think of a different term. Yeah, that's it's not really weird. Work. Just lame, makes me just makes children. me want donuts. I, yeah. I love donuts. I'm gonna get one on the way home. What is how late is vo- Voodoo Donuts up until Voodoo Donuts? I've not tried that. I haven't. I haven't yet. either. I'm fat. Podcast. I'll drive by. I'll let you know. Hmm. I'll let you know All if right. they're open. All right. We will talk to you tomorrow at two thirty. And remember, set that reminder Thursday at two thirty. Nick Felina will be here, so that'll be fun. Nice. We'll talk to you tomorrow and Thursday on the CHGO Blackhawks podcast. <laughs> Y'all silly like the mayor.